Okay, and the next step uh, is going to be our top coat. So we've let our dye uh, finish for uh, curing for 24 hours. And again, you can do that with a sponge or a Q-tip uh, or a calligraphy pen like this, uh, which will allow you to get some very fine detail. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is put your top coat on. This will seal the dye and seal the leather to make it waterproof. Uh, it's I'm using Ecoflu Super Sheen, uh, also purchased at the Tandy Leather Store. It is water soluble, and this is probably the easiest part of the application. Is all you'll need to do is take a sponge brush, uh, dip it into the Echo Flow, okay, and then brush it onto your leather and let it be absorbed in. And you can see that it goes on, you can see the weather instantly gets that wet look to it. Um, it, after, it after this dries, it will return to the color that it was prior to, being, prior to this being applied. The other thing you'll notice is the milky consistency, and this is what we want to avoid, especially on the outside cover. So you want to brush it so that it's smooth and that you get rid of the majority of that milky consistency. Some of it laying inside of the details that we had uh, tooled into the leather are fine. But try and get a nice even coat. Uh, and the reason that we don't want the milky consistency to stay is that if it if it uh, pools into large pools, it'll make the leather actually brittle, and you want the leather to, for the most part, remain flexible. Uh, so that pretty much does it uh, for the top coat. And what that'll do, and we'll set our sample aside, is once we once that dries, it gives it a nice high sheen. And as you can see, this is the uh, nook cover. You can see it's the same pattern that I had tooled into the leather before, and then using the uh, calligraphy pen to go into all of the details with the dye. Uh, I was able to ink them, and you can tell it makes the patterning much more distinctive. Now that shine that you're seeing is actually the top coat that I just applied on the sample swatch with another sponge. This is already dried. Uh, for uh, for 24 hours, so it's you can see it's flexible, and uh, from the outside it's completely finished and good to go. And you can see that it really brings out uh, the black color to give contrast to the piece. So you can see the seal of Rassilon, uh the watch from the Chameleon Arch, and uh, the Fourth Doctor Tardis key in there without any problem. Uh, I also took a Q-tip and did the edge of the leather up to the stitching to try and frame it in a little bit, which is always an option. Um, the other thing is that you can get as creative with this as you want. So at the end of the day, it always looks, it's always going to be what looks good to you because it's going on your nook. Um, on the inside, I've gotten a little ahead of the video. Uh, we did the same thing. I basically just took... Uh, uh, this little dauber that came with the bo with the bottle of black ink and just made this entire interior black and then applied the top coat to it so it made it nice and firm um, <clears throat> now this is the interesting bit because uh, we had had our measurement cut to fit our nook and if for for these purposes I've actually put my nook nook in a ziploc freezer bag uh, and you can see that it'll slide right in. Now you'll notice that uh, the leather is actually laying down onto the nook. And that's kind of by design. When you add this ink, it's going to make the leather very soft on the inside. Um, so that's when you would use your, D your empty DVD case, or if you want to put your nook in a Ziploc freezer bag like I did, um, you can actually get it to lay around there. And then once it's done, once the dye is once done drying, you can go back with the echo flow. And this is the ra this is the instance where you'll want to take your sponge brush and put it on there nice and thick so that you actually can see the milky texture in the patterning. And what'll happen is once it dries, it'll it'll dry raised like this to give it a bit of body. 
So you can see that there's more than ample room under there and the nook will slide right in. Okay. Uh, the last bit that we're go last bit I'm going to cover, and this will pretty much wrap it up, is uh, as you can see, there is now a cloth interior uh, for the co uh, for the cover. And all I did was I went to Joanne Fabrics, uh, bought some extra. This is like a some type of suit cloth. Um, took the measurements and cut it down. Um, I used. Uh, five minute epoxy and uh, some sheet plastic which is nice and firm and I slid that inside this pocket for the front cover and what that did is that as you apply the top coats and start working the leather the, we the leather will start to deform and what this does is you can see this made this nice and hard and what that means is two things. First of all, it's going to give you a nice smooth surface for whatever you did on your cover. The other thing is, is that once your nook is in here, okay, okay, not only do you have the leather that's going to stop anything from hurting the screen, you actually have about an eighth of an inch of solid plastic that's going to do that as well. Now you don't have to use plastic, you can use cardboard or really anything as long as you um, are attaching it into the uh, into the leather. And the leather is very porous so it's going to suck the five minute epoxy right in and actually to avoid making a mess I used um, disposable chopsticks to smear the le to smear the epoxy up under the leather and then slid the plastic in on top of it. And that dried within about 10 minutes. And then the last step that I did was I took the uh, suit fabric, uh, cut it to shape, and uh, then I used uh, this liquid stitch. They also have a product called Stitch Witchery that'll do the same thing. And what I did is I squirted that down on top of the raw leather and took the pre-cut fabric and just laid it in there and pressed it down. Uh, and that dried in very short order, and you can see that kind of finishes it off. It hides the the un you know the unfinished, untooled, undyed leather on the inside. I guess theoretically you could dye the interior the entire interior and get the same effect. I just like that nice cloth look because a lot of the covers that you could buy at Barnes and Noble for your neck have them. Um, so for all intents and purposes, um, my cover is about done, um, and as you can see, it's very straightforward. And again, we started with raw leather that was pre-cut, already had the uh, snap into it. We just had to do a little cutting around the edge. And so, last but not least, we'll pop our nook out of the uh, freezer bag and turn it on. And you can also see that uh, the charging jack for the Nook is easily accessible through the hole that we cut. The Nook fires up just fine and there's still this hole on top that we can use it to, uh, to access the top button uh, quite easily on it. After that, it's just a matter of closing it, snapping it shut, and there's our Nook, ready to travel. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope you found this useful. I hope it'll, it'll inspire you to do your own custom Nook cover. Um, this really wasn't hard. All of the materials, including the, the leather cover and the die and the Echo Flow uh, and the Quill Pen, every, all of this came out to like $42 US, which is about on par with what you would pay with a regular Nook cover, except now you have the option to customize it. Um, it took on and off, and I, what I did is I let, with letting the dye dry for a solid day and letting the top coat dry for a solid day, I probably worked on it about six hours over the period of a week, so it was a fun project. It did not take a lot of time, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I highly recommend doing this, and uh, please feel free to post links to pictures of the note covers that you make. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.